Good evening and welcome to our third and our final night in our weekend of online gospel mission. It has been wonderful to have you joining with us each and every night. I do want to thank you again for spending this time with us on this Sunday night and we do pray that the Lord will bless and encourage you and even speak to you if you're not saved that through the gospel preaching this evening that the Lord will speak to you and even draw you unto himself. We do want to thank the Reverend McRae for taking this time and for being with us over this weekend of Gospel Mission. And we do pray that the Lord will bless even once again this evening, as he has in other nights, that the Lord will use these messages to speak on the precious souls. Can we say that if you have any questions or queries at all, or if you're worried about your need for salvation, then at the end of the service our details will come up on the screen. We do encourage you to get in touch with us. If we can help you in any way spiritually, do not hesitate to even make contact with us. And we'll be delighted not only to speak with you, but even to point you to the one true and living God, the one who can take away your sin, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We're delighted, as we said, to have the Reverend McRae. We're going to hand the rest of the service over to him now, praying that the Lord will bless him and that the Lord will use the preaching of his precious word this night to the salvation of many precious souls. Upon my heart there is a burden For lost souls and gone astray Can't you hear the Savior calling Thank you. 
Once again, we're turning to God's precious Word, and thank you for joining us and listening in to the ministry of God's infallible truth. We're coming to God's Word in the book of Mark's Gospel, the chapter number 10, commencing to read at verse number 13. And they brought young children to Jesus, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whoso ever shall not receive the kingdom of God as little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hand upon them, and blessed them. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, and kneeled to him, and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and, and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. And God will add his blessing to the reading of his precious word for his name's sake. Amen. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless us in the ministry of his word. Eternal God and gracious Heavenly Father, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus, we bow before thee once again. We thank thee and we praise thee for thy precious word. Thy word is forever settled in heaven. We thank you, O God, that we can rest upon thy word, for thy word is truth. And, O God, our Father, we pray that by thy Holy Spirit, that thou wilt take of thy word and write it upon the hearts of those that listen in tonight. We pray that, Lord, that as the seed of the word of God is sown, we pray that by the Holy Spirit that that will be watered and applied to the hearts in the midst of their need. And draw men and women, boys and girls, to a personal saving faith in Jesus Christ and in him alone. Lord, we pray that there may be those this night as the word of God is preached, that thou wilt our God bring them to repentance and to faith in Christ Jesus. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As you study the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are many times the Lord Jesus is surrounded by 
a lot of people. Yes, indeed, there were the, the days of his popularity when men and women thronged to him because of his healing the sick and giving sight to the blind or even raising the dead. But as you study the Word of God, you'll find that the Lord Jesus was one who experienced the joy of personal evangelism. And individuals had a great importance in the ministry and in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember when he was telling the story about the lost things? He told about one coin that was lost. The nine others were safely there. And then he talked about the lost sheep and how that 99 were safely in the fold. But one was lost. And how the shepherd went after that one lost sheep, having secured the safety in the fold of the rest of the flock. And the shepherd went after the one that was lost until he found it. And then he told the story about the lost son, the prodigal son, one of the greatest stories that have ever been written. The picture that Jesus Christ painted like none other. And how that Jesus Christ displayed the value of that personal touch. The Lord Jesus said, What shall it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? One precious soul, yes, your precious soul, is very precious in the sight of the Lord. And I believe that it's not by chance you're watching, but that God is speaking to individuals because he doesn't save in crowds. It's a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember that was so with Nicodemus, who came to the Lord Jesus by night? He came whilst he was a very religious man, yet he knew that his religion had not given him peace of heart or peace of mind. And Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Do you remember the Lord Jesus Christ sat there at the well of Samaria and the woman came? And the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to that one woman about the well of water that he could give that would never run dry. And she said, Sir, give me that water. Do you remember the poor man at the pool of Bethesda? There are many others that were lying there at that pool, but the Lord Jesus came for one person. A man that had been lying there for all of those years. He had tried his best to shuffle his way to get to the water whenever it was stirred, longing for healing. But he said there was no man to help him. And so he lay there. That was until... Jesus came. Do you remember the Lord Jesus Christ was coming into the city of Jericho and there was a blind man that was sitting there. His name was Bartimaeus. Nobody was interested in Bartimaeus. Yes, he had been carried to the side of the road and he was left there to beg for food. The Lord Jesus was passing that way. And as the Savior was passing through, we find that the Lord Jesus Christ heard the cry of Bartimaeus and he said, To Jesus, thou son of David, had mercy upon me. And the people in the crowd said, Keep quiet, keep quiet. He's not interested in you. And Jesus stood still. And Jesus says, Bring him to me. You see, the Savior was interested in the individual. And I'm going to turn this evening to a passage of God's Word that talks about another personal encounter. 
that Jesus had with a poor lost soul. And I trust tonight, as I preach, that you'll have that personal encounter with Christ. That you'll come by faith and you will receive him as your Savior. Now the Word of God tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ is on his way to Jerusalem. He had been preaching in a house, by the way. We find that whilst there, they brought the little children to the Lord Jesus, that the Lord might put his hand upon them and touch them. But the disciples, they couldn't be bothered with the children. And so they tried to, 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 to push them away and tell them to go away. Don't bother the master. But the Bible tells us that Jesus rebuked the disciples. And the Lord Jesus said to those that brought them, bring them to me. And the Savior put his hand upon them, each one individually. And the Savior took them up in his arms and he blessed them. You see, the Savior has a heart of compassion, a heart of love. One who understands what you're going through. Whenever the Lord Jesus Christ looked upon the crowd, the Bible says that Jesus had compassion upon them because he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. But the Savior had compassion on the individuals in the Scriptures because the Bible says that Jesus beholding this man, Jesus loved. Him. Now, when we look at this story here in God's Word, it tells us that when Jesus had gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneels down to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he asks him a question, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? I want you to notice he kneels down in the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and he looks up into the face of the Lord Jesus with this question, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? I want you to notice this young man, friend. This young man is a young man who is so near to Christ. And yet as we read the rest of the story, he's so far from him. You see, it is so possible, it is tragically possible to be near to Jesus and yet not know him. There are people that are listening to me now, and perhaps you were raised in the gospel. Maybe you were raised with a godly father, or a godly mother, or a grandparent, and you sat at their knee, and you heard them tell the story of Jesus. And maybe you sang the lovely little chorus, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And with all that knowledge in Sunday school, with a godly Sunday school teacher telling your need of the Lord Jesus Christ, and friend, you've been brought face to face with the claims of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you're not saved. So near. And yet, so far. The Bible tells us a story of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was so near to Christ, friend, that the Bible says that Judas Iscariot had told the soldiers, the one that I kiss on the cheek. Yes, the one that I kiss. And he was so near to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ that he rain kisses upon the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the sad reality is he went with the warmth of the kiss on his lips to a suicide's grave and to hell itself. He was so near 
the man who kissed the door to heaven, because Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The man who kissed the door to heaven, and yet he went to hell. What a tragedy. Do you remember Pilate? Pilate was the governor, and he got so close to Christ, he could sense the very majesty, the very magnetism of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, he went with that image of the master mirrored unforgettably upon his mind. To a Christless hell. He looked into the very eyes of Christ, and as he spoke to Christ, he was able to say, I find no fault. And this man, he knew that out of envy that the crowd had delivered him, the religious leaders had delivered Jesus to be crucified. He even cried out, why what evil hath he done? And then he turned to the crowd and he said, Well, what shall I do then with Jesus? When the crowd cried, Deliver Barabbas, set him free. What will I do with Jesus? They said, Let him be crucified. And yet Pilate, he took a basin of water and he washed his hands and he said, I'm innocent of the blood of this just man. See ye to it. And yet the word of God says, after he, Pilate, had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And whilst he didn't personally take the hammer and nail the nails through the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, it was Pilate who delivered Jesus to be crucified. Yes, so close, so near, and yet so far. Do you remember Felix? Felix sat under the testimony and the preaching of the Apostle Paul as Paul reasoned with him concerning temperance and, and righteousness and, and then judgment to come. The Bible says, as Felix heard that, Felix trembled. He shook to the very core of his being. But he only trembled. And then he sent the oftener for Paul. But notice it never says again that Felix trembled. Yes, there was one day He was so near. But he said that day, when I have a convenient season, I'll call for thee. Friend, that was his day. That was the convenient season. But the devil said, put it off, Felix. Another day. Is there someone listening to me right now? And do you remember nights that you have sat under the preaching of the word of God, friend, and you trembled? You shook in the very seat you were sitting on. I have known of people sitting in gospel meetings. I watched them, and they sat on their very hands as the appeal was made to indicate their desire to come to Christ. And they were so moved and touched, they sat on their very hands to keep their hands down. And after that I watched them. And they came and they went from meeting after meeting but they're not troubled anymore. You see, so near and yet so far. Do you remember Agrippa? He was a king. He was sitting upon that throne of judgment. And once again, 
Paul gave his testimony how that he had met, or the Lord had met him on the Damascus Road, how the Lord had changed his life, how the Lord had saved him. And Felix said, Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Paul would hear that I, as he said, I would to God, Felix, or Grippa, that not only thou, but all these that are with you today were all together, such as I am, except the bone. He wanted them to be saved. Why am I preaching tonight? I say with Paul, my heart's desire and prayer for you is this. That you might be saved. Almost persuaded now to believe. Almost persuaded Christ to receive Seems now some soul to say, Go, Spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day on the alcohol. Just a step away, friend. So near. And then the young man. Let me tell you, he was nearer still. He was kneeling down in the very presence of the Son of God himself. It wasn't Paul. It was the Savior himself. And it says, Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Thus, how near he got, friend. He reached the very heart of Christ. The Savior's heart was breaking for him. The Savior's eyes were tear-lipped for him. And yet the Bible tells us that he went away grieved. So near. Yet so far. Is that you? But let's look again at this young man. The Bible tells us, the word of God says there's one came running to him. But it says at the end of the story, he was sad at that saying and went a great grief, for he had great possessions. In other words, he was a rich young man. But here's the contrast. He was so rich, and yet he was so poor. The young man comes running. My, there was something that stirred in this young man's soul. Was he standing in the house when Jesus was speaking in the house? Did he stand there as the Lord Jesus took those little ones in his arms? And, and my, as the parents asked the Lord Jesus to put his hand upon them and, and bless them, did he see the Savior doing that? He was deeply moved. Something moved this young man. He was dead earnest. Because the Bible says that as Jesus went forth, there came a young man running. And then he knelt down before the Lord Jesus Christ. This was no act, friend. This was real. His heart was burdened. He was troubled. And so, and the Bible says he was a rich young man. And yet notice his question. With all he had got, he realized there was something he hadn't got. Because he said, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit? Eternal life. You see, he knew he hadn't got that. He had great possessions. 
But he did knew this, that he had not life for eternity. He knew that one day he was going to have to die. And then he realized, listen, I'm going to have to leave it all. And didn't want to leave it all. He said, how do I get this eternal life? What shall I do to get it? See, the Bible says this young man had great possessions. But he inherited it. And so therefore, he says, how do I inherit? How, how do I get? This is something with all that I was given, with all that was handed down to me from my parents. They didn't give me something that I need. All that I have is for time, but have nothing for eternity. My friend, that's true. Sinner of yourself, all that you have, I don't care how great a mansion you're living in, you've got to leave it someday. All that you gather together, you've got to leave it behind. My, the story is told about the funeral procession and of this rich man, and he was being carried down the road. And, and as the people were walking behind the coffin in the community, you know how people conversed the one with the other. And they were all anxious to know how much he had left. Somebody said, do you know, does anybody know what he left? And one man says, I do. And they gathered round him thinking they were going to hear how many millions the man had left. He says, let me tell you, he left all. And friend, that's true. No matter what you've got, you leave all. Your family will gather around your bed. And they'll watch you go down into the valley of the shadow of death. If you're a child of God. But dear sinner, they'll stand at your bed. And if you're going down into death, it's not a shadow. It's the real thing. It's to die in time and go out into the second death, eternal death, eternally separated from God in a Christless hell forever. There's no hope. For all eternity. This young man was rich. He inherited it all. But he had nothing. For the journey that he was going to take. Eternity. Let me ask you. What have you for that journey? I don't know when that call will come. I don't know when God will take you from the scene of time out into God's eternity, but this I do know. We all must needs die. I stood at the grave of a young man of 36 years of age. After three o'clock on Sunday morning passed, he didn't know that it was his last day gone. Eternity. Young lad down the road from him, 17 years of age. Gone. You see, we all must need to die. But listen to me, friend. It's appointed unto men once to die. Listen, listen. But after this, the hereafter, I've stood at many a side of a grave. I've heard men and women walk away from the grave side and say, that's the end of Jimmy. That's the end of Mary. That's the end of Joe. Friend, what fools they are, it's not. It's only begun. 
eternity. Either in heaven with Christ or in hell without him. This young man was conscious. There was something missing. With all that he had, it was not enough. He felt so empty, that's why he came running and fell down in the front of all those people that were gathered around the Lord Jesus. He didn't care. He didn't care. He was dead earnest when he asked those questions, that question. He had great possessions, but they were only passing possessions. He possessed nothing to what he desired. Permanent possessions that he would never have to leave. And that's what you have in Christ. The gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It was the Queen of England who, in the end of her days, said these words All my possessions for a moment of time. I don't care how long you live, sinner. No matter how long it is, no matter how many years that God gives you, it'll be too short if you're not saved. Because you're going out to the blackness and the darkness of hell forever where there's no hope. So rich and yet so poor. What will it profit you? Even if you are to gather all that the world has got to give. That's what Jesus said. What should a profit man if you should gain the whole world? Now you'll never do that. But even if you were to get it all, it's not worth it to lose your own soul. A preacher was visiting a home. They went out in the afternoon from the morning service, out in the afternoon. The farmer wanted to show him his possessions. He took the preacher to a mountaintop in the States, United States of America, and he showed him from that view as far as the eye could see. And he said, look, you see all those fields of grain over there? You see all those grain? And there was acre upon acre upon acre of grain. He says, it's all mine. And then he pointed this way. And he said, you see all of those cattle there? You see all of those countless hundreds of beasts in the field? They're all mine. And he pointed back here and he said, you see, all the sheep, there are thousands of them. He says, you know, preacher, they're all mine. In the distance, there's hundreds of acres of forests. He says, you see, all that timber out there, it's all mine. Preacher, stop for a moment. He says, sir, yes, I'm impressed. He says, you have all of that, and all of that, and all of that, and all of that. But let me ask you a question. What have you up there? And he bowed his head. so rich, and yet so poor. 
And maybe you're craving after earth's riches tonight. Then it's not worth it to damn your soul for. This young man had great possessions. And he went away. So rich, yet so poor. He was so good. And yet so bad. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke to that young man. He said, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. You know what the young man said? He said, Master, all these have I observed from my youth up. Jesus didn't say to him, Young man, you're lying. Notice that. What did Jesus say? He said, One thing thou lackest. There's something missing. Do you not see it what it is, friend? You see, all of those commandments, they were man's relationship with man. But the commandments are divided in two. Six of those are man's relationship with man. Four of them are man's relationship with God. And they come first. He was a young man. And humanly speaking, he sat out in a crowd. He honored his parents. He didn't steal. He didn't kill. He didn't commit adultery. He didn't bear false witness. Yes, those things he didn't do. In other words, he had a perfect relationship with fellow man. He was one of the most honored young men in society. But the commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he had. And that's why the Lord Jesus said, young man, sell all that you have. Why? Because this young man was trusting in his riches. His life was existing there because of riches, his possessions. That's what kept him from the Lord Jesus. Possessions. He had a God in his heart already. And God says, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all my, thy mind, and with all thy strength. And friend, this young man had no relationship with God. Man's relationship was fine. But no relationship with God. And all he wanted was to inherit more life for eternity. Friends, you can't have your sin and have Jesus too. The Lord Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which is lost, to deliver you from your sin. The Lord Jesus is accept you repent. You've got to turn away from your sin. You can't keep going on in your sin. You know, people say to me, well, if I make a little profession, will that not be all right? And it can go back to me old sinning. No, my friend. If there's a heart experience, then there will be a change. You've got to repent of your sin. You've got to turn from your sin. There's got to be a change of mind and there's got to be a change of heart, a change of direction in your life. You've got to turn from your sin. Oh, turn ye! Oh, turn ye! For why will you die? You can't go on in your sin except you repent, says Jesus. You perish. And here was a young man, and he had goodness as far as man was concerned. But a soul that was as black as hell itself, sin, that would separate him from God forever. With his eye closed, this young man was so wise. And yet he was so foolish. 
Notice the Lord Jesus Christ came running to the one who had the answer for eternal life. He didn't run to those who were leading in society. He didn't run to those members of the Sanhedrin. He did not run to the rulers of the synagogue. No, he ran to Jesus. Sad reality is there's people in Ulster and they think their church will get them to heaven. They think their preacher is their passport to glory. Listen to me carefully, Dad. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. And he was so wise, he ran to the feet of Jesus and he knelt down before him. But listen to this. He was sad at what Jesus said, and he went away, grieved. So foolish. What was he looking for? Eternal life. And he turned his back on the only one that could give it to him. Because the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm going to ask you a question. Are you going to turn away from Jesus? Are you going to play the fool? You know, down in hell, in a crisis eternity tonight. There's a poor lost soul. This is not a parable, friend. This is a real story. This young man knelt at the feet of Jesus, the giver of eternal life. And he turned his back, and he went away, grieved. He wanted to keep his God, his riches, rather than receive Jesus. What about you? I have a soul to be saved. May this truth be engraved in my heart and my mind while I'm young. Oh, how awful the cost if my soul should be lost. And in hell if I die as I am. Some years ago, a loved one of my own was dying. He was someone who was close to me and the rest of my family, an uncle. But the sad reality is no time for God. The night that he died, he was heard to cry, Oh, hell, hell, hell. And then it was over. For time. As a child I cried myself to sleep. Concerning that uncle that I loved. But I can't change his destiny. But I beg you tonight. O oh, turn while the Saviour in mercy is pleading. Steer for the harbour light. 
or how do you know? But your soul may be drifting over the deadline tonight. Those in heaven will never want that. But those in hell will never get back. Don't play the fool, friend. Come to Jesus. Now. Be saved. Heavenly Father, write thy word upon our hearts, we pray. Is some precious soul listening the sound of the preacher's voice tonight, cry out on the Lord. Lord, save me. I perish. And thank you, Lord, immediately. You'll hear their cry. You'll save their soul. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.